Today we have something very exciting. We are going to talk about dog start. Let's do it. Thank you so much for joining us again today. We love you guys. We are making another video. Today we're going to talk about dog starts and I'm going to break down this video into three parts. First part, what uh, skill you need before you start doing some dog start. Part two, the, the, the gear you need, uh, more specifically the foil. And then part three, the technique. So if you go down in the description, there's the timestamps so you can go straight into what you want to know. But let's start with what do you need to know uh, before to get into dog start. I would say definitely you need to be comfortable foiling. Whether you are wing foiling, kite foiling, foiling behind a boat, foiling, you should be very comfortable. Two, you need to have basic um, understanding and, and knowledge of pumping. So if you are wing foiling, then maybe you need to be able to like put your wing down and pump and be able to go without the wing. If you foil behind a boat, you need to be able to fall behind the boat, let the rope go, be on the wave and maybe get off the wave and start pumping. I would say this is gonna help you so much because if you are trying to figure out how to pump while you are doing your first dog start, it's gonna be very difficult because you are starting with no speed and it's not forgiving. At least with a wing of, or behind a boat, you start trying to pump, you already have speed, so you have time to figure it out. With no speed, if you can't do it, you're gonna go down right away. Let's move on to the gear you need. So today, I'm using the Dakine foil, the Charger foil 1950, uh, with aluminum mass 70 centimeters and 220 uh, stabilizer. So to me, if you wanna learn how to dock start, your first setup should be a big foil. So something around 2000, to me is very important. Um, and then for the mast, 70 centimeters is ideal. You also want to make sure you have a dog that's not too high. If you do have a dog that's a bit higher, you know, this, this dog is very close to the water. That is perfect for learning. And that's why a, centi, a 70 centimeter mast will be easier to pump. And right now you don't need any much higher because you are close to the water. Sometimes if I have a dog that's a bit higher, I will use an 80 centimeter mast just so that I'm not like so like bent over to get the foil already in the water when I want to jump on it. So ideally in your, in your dog configuration, you know, right here, I'm on a straight dog. I have two boats in between. If you can find a dog that has basically you come off the end of the dock, so you have like the corner right there and then that is where you're going to be jumping. I would say that will be uh, your safest option. That way, you know, you can jump on it and then, you know, if you fall, you can fall in any direction. You are fine. You got away from the dock. If you just have a straight dock like here, um, when you're going to jump on it, you have to, you, so you, you, you run parallel to the, um, uh, to the dock, pick up speed and your final push, you're basically going to angle your foil like 45 degrees. So you get away from the dock. And then at this point, you, you know, you, you are on it. You can fall in any direction. You are pretty much safe. Also for the burn, I would definitely recommend a burn that you can bang. That's why I love this one. Uh, this is the special agent. This burn is unbreakable. You can bang it however many times you want. It's not going to be damaged because when you get back on the dock, when you at first you're going to fall, your body is going to bang the dock. So having something that you're not going to break on the dock is nice. Um, so we have the right setup and now let's get into the technique. So like I said, you want a dock that's close to the water. You also want to be able to run. Um, so if there is nothing, no railing, no uh, thing for like the boats to cut your feet on, that's pretty ideal um, because when you're going to start, you basically want speed. Speed is your friend, as much speed as you can get. Now you don't want to run like crazy and be out of control because you still need to jump on the, on the burn. 
So I'm just gonna show you a dog stand. Hopefully I don't fall. And then we can go into it and I can break it down, break down the technique. So I don't have much room here in between the two boats. So I start as close as I can from here. So I have enough room to jump, focus, and then run, 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 run. All right, so we are going. I'm just gonna get back. Okay, so let's break it down. First step, foils makes contact with the water pretty close to the surface. That's why it's nice also to have a dock where your foil fits under the dock. That's really gonna make a difference. If you have to foil, hold your foil um, to the side, much harder. The other thing is, as I start running, now the foil wants to fly. So I'm gonna move my hand position to on top of the board. At this point, while I'm running and I have speed, I'm not holding the board anymore like I am right now. If I let it go, it falls. When I have speed, the board wants to lift. So the only thing to keep contact and control of the board, the only thing I need to know is have my hand on top of it to prevent the board basically to come out. Now, something I'm gonna show you that is very helpful. The first few dog styles I did, I would let the board go and jump on it. The downside of that is that now when I don't have co uh, contact with the board anymore and I jump on it, I pretty much jump like an elephant and you wanna be like a cat. You wanna jump on the foil without disturbing too much of what's happening. That's why I think keeping contact with the board is gonna be very helpful. Here is an example. Let's say this is my board. If I was to run, 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 lose contact, jump on it, that's a big jump. Now, if I'm running on it, I keep contact, I jump on it, I can't jump a big jump because I have contact with the board and it has to be pretty gentle. It's forcing me, I cannot jump high to land on the board because I have contact. So contact with the bone is gonna keep, help you have control, and then it's gonna make you jump on it softly. The other thing is, if you notice on the videos, my back foot goes first. So I run, 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 back foot, front foot. That is the technique. And then what I try to do is have a bit of glide, you know, just a second before I start pumping to make sure I'm balanced, I'm good, fit position is good. Sometimes I do realize my fit position is not that great. I can slightly correct it and now I start pumping. So that's the thing for the pumping, you will realize that like um, uh, you, you, you want to keep a good cadence, a good, a good rhythm and a movement with your arms that's going to help is this. So every, it's kind of like a, a Every two stroke, I go up and up this way, up, up. So that is, you can practice this on the, on the beach. It's gonna help. And basically how the, the principle of pumping is like a pump track, whether you are on a bike or on a skateboard, you have bumps and on the way down, that's when you pick up speed, you relief your weight on the way up and then glide down, relief, glide down. You push with your back leg. That's why when you're gonna be pumping, you're gonna realize after, you know, if you are not <laughs> efficient after 10 seconds, maybe five seconds, your back leg is gonna start to burn a lot. That's because you have to push with your back leg. The front leg is pretty much just keeping control of the bone. The front leg is preventing, when you push with your back leg, you don't want the foil to come out. So that was your, that's, that's what your front leg is doing, keeping control and creating uh, a smooth uphill and then downhill. But your back leg is the back leg you push with. You can notice on the, on the video that the back heel is actually lifting up from the bone. You know, no more contact with the bone as you are going up. And that's, that really shows that the goal is to relieve 
your weight from the board as you are going back up. You are basically creating a small uphill, you know, going uphill with your foil. And so that is when you want to relieve your weight. That's why in the videos you see, we kind of like no more contact with the back heel. It's because we are almost weightless. And then we are putting pressure. We are going back down. So relief. Now I'm going downhill. And now I'm pushing on the back leg to basically get the foil to come up again. That's why, you know, all of the pressure, that's why your back leg is getting tired first, is because you are pushing hard on your back leg to make the foil go up. And it's kind of a small jump. Boom, I go weightless, I allow the foil to come back up, and I glide again down. So it is that motion, and it's really with my back leg that most of the power is coming from. So I would say maybe the first step as you are running, getting speed and jumping on a bone, the first step would be you have to figure out where your feet go on the bone. Basically, if you jump on it and the, the, the foil comes like out or stalls, you are putting too much pressure on your back foot. If you jump on it and the bone goes down underwater, you are put, putting too much um, pressure forward of the foil. So the first step is to figure out where your position is on the burn and that just comes with repetition. Um, and then you, you want to be able to glide as you, after you just jumped on it. So I would say don't get uh, too quick of jumping on a burn and start pumping. You have to figure out is your position right and if your position is right before you start pumping, you're going to be able to glide a bit. So I would say do a few repetitions where you run with the foil, you jump on it with that technique of um, you know, keeping contact with the burn, back foot goes first, front foot, glide as far as you can, no pumping, get in the water, swim back, and, and, and do that over and over until you find uh, the right position. All right, let's put that into action. So dog start and then we're going to be pumping a bit more. Again, fall in the water. I'm going to be running, keeping contact with the bone and back leg first. All right. So again, you see that movement. That's what it is. I push with my back leg, create a small bump, glide on the way down. very physical so you have to be ready you have to build your way into it and then if you don't want to get wet this dock is nice there's rubber I don't damage my bone but that's what it is so maybe watch it several times if you want to get everything out of it but again for pumping, if you didn't master the pumping yet, go behind the boat, pick up some speed with the rope, let the rope go, and practice your pumping with speed before you practice your pumping with no speed from a dock. So I hope this is gonna be helpful for you guys. It's gonna be a great workout. It's gonna get you in shape. You do a few repeats like that. You go, you pump, you rest, you go again, and you got a fun workout. So now we're gonna leave you on a positive note with the man himself, Damien. He's gonna give you some inspiration, and I'll see you guys next week. You! You know, I always was worried about like, you know, I wanna be on the, just as big as I can make it and make the biggest impact and say, hey, let's make, let's make a change in this world. Let's really like, you know, you know, if we're going to clean up this world, it's got to be structured. If we, you know, our political side's got to be non-corrupt. I mean, there's a lot that they could really go into some serious talking points, but, um, I would just say, if you can change one person, it's good enough for me. And, and, and even if I tried and I didn't, it's okay. I'm okay with that. As long as I gave more today than I took in, and, and to me, I'm okay with that. So I'd say 
uh, say leaving on that note, I would say, you know, give more than you take, um, you know, share your positivity. You can't take anything with you when this is done. So things are just things, moments and memories and experiences and adventures and learning is all you're going to have. And so, you know, don't miss out on those moments with your loved ones and um, cherish them. Sometimes you just get caught. You're on the phone, whatever you're working. Cherish those moments. Take advantage of it. Own it. Um, and I think, um, you know, all I can say is I appreciate you, Gwen, and, and all that we've learned and done already so far and what's to come in the future. I think um, you never know. Who knows where this goes? I'm open to it. I'm super pumped about it. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, everybody. I wanted to share this with everybody today uh, with Gwen because, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we forget about the most important things in life. 